Hey, so I've been listening to and taking part in this really cool challenge. It's called the New Wave Challenge with Melanie Ann Layer. And she's really brilliant. Um, I, I very, very much admire and respect her in a lot of ways. And she's really blowing my mind um, about how she presents things and what she's presenting because I think well, I don't think, I know she's hitting on some really core stuff and changes for us as a humanity. And one of the things that um, started to come up for me as I was listening to the first and the second day of the challenge was she brought up the concepts of shame and guilt and all of a sudden it kind of just triggered something in me where I really, you know, asked myself, I was like, what are the primary energies that I have actually really been struggling with and have had a hard time reconciling with inside of myself? And so the ones that came up were shame, guilt, embarrassment, and humiliation. And I was like, Going through the past couple weeks, uh, I've been having some interesting uh, attempts at conversations with my mother, and God knows I love her. I mean, she's a really incredible woman, but we just have our struggles, and I know that we teach each other a lot of stuff, even though sometimes it's not in the way that, you know, I thought it would be, but... I really started to realize, I was like, wow, I'm carrying some energy and some frequencies that actually just aren't even mine, that, that I, the family that I was born into, these were the dynamics. So I just decided, I was like, you know, I'm so done with, with feeling these energies that when listening to Melanie Ann, it really pulled me back a bit. And I was like, oh, hold on a minute, there's actually a pattern here, and I'm going to look right at it. I'm not going to be afraid of it. I'm not going to try to escape it. I'm not going to try to distract myself with the uncomfortable feelings. I'm going to face this head on. So here's what I became aware of um, in, in really being willing to look at what are these emotions, you know, not just how do I get rid of it, but where the shit come from and who does it actually belong to and what is mine to face and what is mine to let go of. So here's what I found for me. This might be helpful for you. So I looked at shame, guilt, embarrassment, and humiliation. And I wrote them down and I was like, you know, I don't know. I'm curious. It's like, wow, I've been feeling these. I've been focusing on these. But what in the world Are there freaking opposites? And like, what do they actually even mean? Right? Because I wasn't willing to look at that. I felt it. It felt like shit. I wanted it away from me. But it wouldn't really fully leave till I got to this point to understand what dynamic I was in. And why did I land up picking or choosing or being exposed to these And how do I switch it? Not just keep focusing on those or keep focusing on getting rid of them. What's the beneficial experience of those and what do they actually alchemize into? So here's how it kind of went, was my process. And I was sitting and writing this whole thing out. So I realized, okay, I'm totally willing to own those energies that are actually mine, right? And those that aren't, I'm willing to look at and I'm willing to return them to source because I don't need to carry them anymore. So the first one I looked at was shame. And shame came up as a feeling as a painful feeling arising from the consciousness of something dishonorable, improper, or ridiculous. Now that was fascinating, right? Because shame comes from somebody doing something that probably isn't right. 
And immediately I was like, wow, who does this shame? Whose is it? And I realized, oh my God, that shame that I've been carrying is my father's. Because my father sexually abused me when I was a child. So what happened was he totally invalidated my own self-respect and my own honor of my being. He completely dishonored my being by not even seeing or recognizing his own one and a half year old daughter in front of him. Instead, he was more focused on his out of control sexual pleasure I never even saw who I was. So I'm not going to victim and I'm not going to judgment or blame. But all of a sudden, as soon as I saw that, and I saw what the definition of shame was, I was like, well, what's the opposite of shame? And what came up was dignity and honor and respect. And because that had been so violated in me as a young child, no, I spent the rest of my life trying to prove that I am worthy of honor, that I'm worthy of respect, that I'm a dignified person. And I was like, wow, I wonder what other energies are here. I wonder what other things... I need to see about guilt and about embarrassment and about humiliation because as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw the contrast between what it was and whose it was, because as little kids before the age of seven, we're taking on everything. We think it's ours and it's not. And as soon as I saw that, and trust me, I have been working on this for decades, it was like snap of a finger my alignment had been towards taking on somebody else's issues taking it on because I thought on a subconscious level I'm so much stronger I'll handle it for him so he doesn't have to deal with it now I'm left with it thinking now of course that it's me because I made that agreement on a subconscious basis and as soon as I saw this it was like A firefly just lit up the night and I was like, oh my God, the shame isn't even mine. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I did nothing wrong. And what that situation was teaching me in my life was how to honor and respect myself. That he couldn't give me that honor. I had to find it within myself so I've learned now the gift for me of shame and how it went to a feeling of I don't matter I'm not enough because how can my own father completely and unconsciously be so dishonorable and improper and I mean bordering on absolutely fucking ridiculous because who in the hell does that with a one and a half year old child who doesn't see the divinity in that child and who does not want to keep that child safe and protected it's not a father but I took all of that emotional energetic imprint on and so I felt so much shame and I couldn't understand why but it wasn't mine and so my teaching with my father in this lifetime all of a sudden got so clear it was like oh my god he was giving me the opportunity to reclaim my honor and my self-respect and instantly the shame cleared now we're going to talk about the energy of guilt and what I found out about my mother So when I completed that with my father, it was the first time I could take a really deep, clean, clear breath and go, oh my God, 
God, I never have to carry that again. I don't have to try to kill it. I don't have to try to destroy it. I get to understand it. It's dissolved now. I've digested it. I get to alchemize it. And now I get to share these, these awarenesses with other people. So when that completed, now I went into looking at guilt. And right away, my mother came up, right? The feelings of guilt that I have always held, like I betrayed her or I didn't, um, you know, wasn't a good enough kid for her. But there was also so much anger in our relationship. And it took me a while. I had this awareness a while back when I realized about the sexual abuse. I was like, whoa. I would, f I felt guilty because, you know, her husband cheated on her with his daughter, me. And she must have felt so much guilt because when I was 19 years old, after having blocked that incident and suppressed it for so many years, not recognizing that it even happened until it was 19 years old, she must have been carrying the guilt because when I first shared with her, hey, listen, I think something happened, the first thing she said to me was, oh my God, I thought something had happened, but I could never put my finger on it. So, you know, what happens with guilt, right? Like, I mean, and I'm sure somewhere inside of him, my father felt guilty too, but he, you know, he was in so much shame inside of him and he was so disconnected that he couldn't even handle it so the guilt all of a sudden I was like whoa okay this might not be mine like I always felt guilty I always felt bad if I was expressing what I needed to express or how I felt and I wasn't heard and then I got angry because I wasn't being heard for what I was saying, that I would feel guilty that I got angry. And so I said, okay, well, what's the real opposite of guilt? Well, first of all, what's the definition of guilt? So the definition as a noun is the fact of having committed a specified or implied offense or crime. The verb meaning is to make someone feel guilty, especially in order to induce them to do something. Now, I am not saying that my father did not guilt trip you or guilt trip me in different ways, but I think he was projecting his own guilt on me as a child because he didn't want to take responsibility for his own behavior. With my mother, what I saw about the guilt is that she had felt so guilty that she didn't have the wherewithal or the skills to protect me from my father because on some level, if 19 years later you say to your mother, Listen, I need to talk with you. I think something happened when I was young and dad violated me. And the first thing that comes out of your mother's mouth is, oh my God, I had a feeling I just could never catch him. Well, that could wear on a person's sense of guilt because as my mom, who I know loves me, she felt guilty she wasn't able to protect me. So I carried that around, right? And as I carried that energy around, when my mom would ask me to do something or something wasn't done right, I would get the guilt trip. And so that would definitely trigger me not being in my power and caving to wanting to please her 
but being really, really angry and frustrated about it. So then I went to look at what's the opposite of guilt. And what came up was innocence and feeling at peace and forgiveness and having a clear conscience. And as I look back on my relationship with my mother, I was like, wow, that is fascinating because there's always been a struggle between she and I. And there's something in there about not having a clear conscience, you know, something weighing on her, something weighing on me. And finally, she and I had a conversation a couple of days ago and I was sharing with her how I felt about something and I wasn't attacking her and it was not, um, you know, it was not a harsh conversation. It was just sharing with her how I felt. And then immediately she started attacking me and trying to interrupt me. And I just went from zero to 60, not out of anger, like I used to have tantrums when I was a kid, but out of clarity and fierceness. And I said, goodbye. And I hung up the phone because I realized, wow, she wasn't even listening to how I felt. And I was not putting things on her she was hearing it as I was putting things on her but I was very very clear that I wasn't I was just sharing with her my feelings and I thought wow if we can't even have a conversation where I can honestly share with you how I feel about something not what you did but how I feel then that's definitely not the grounds for an intimate loving relationship where where we can have a safe space where we both can feel heard. So as soon as I recognized that about the guilt and what I had been carrying for her, I was like, I'm done. I don't need to carry this anymore. It isn't mine. There's nothing I have to feel guilty about that she at the time wasn't able to protect me or do what she needed to do was never my fault and I'm not even blaming her I'm just saying hey I'm aware of what happened and I want to clean up this emotional energetic dynamic so now we're really you know I'm deep diving at this point into the emotional intimacy you know the truth of how I was feeling not just blaming her you know not just resisting the feeling of feeling guilty but just going okay let's crack this fucker open and let's just see what's really contained here so I can get free of it I can free her I can't free her of it but I can forgive the whole thing so she's free of it if she chooses to be free of it so I just thought wow this is fascinating you know I never really grasped the concept and even the shame that I felt from my father well It wasn't my shame. I didn't do anything wrong. But it was somehow that he had been shaming me or putting the responsibility or projecting on me his inability to control his own behavior because he got turned on by the purity of my presence and the orgasmicness of my childlike, like openness, like wonder, you know, purity. And so now I'm going, okay, I'm two for two. Like now I've let go of the shame. I've let go of the guilt. And what else am I still feeling? It was like embarrassment and humiliation. And I went, okay, this seems to be a little bit of a process here. So now I'm going to take a look at what does embarrassment mean? What is this opposite? And it was like, who you know, and my family was the embarrassment piece. And I was like, oh, that was my sister. So now I'm going to share with you what I come to understand about embarrassment and what its opposite is. And if you're feeling this, you can shift it too. So I had looked at this concept of embarrassment from the 
context of like, what have I been feeling lately? So I had COVID really, really bad in 2021. I almost died. I had it for 13 days. I mean, I literally was hanging on by a threat. I never went to the hospital. But a couple things that um, after effects of it. I got really, really disconnected from my soul. I think that was the intention of, honestly, the bioweapon, was to disconnect us from our actual source. And about five months after I had it, I started pulling out clumps and clumps of hair daily till I lost about 85% of my hair. And my hair was long and curly and... For the first time in a long time before I had gotten COVID, I was finally feeling comfortable in my body. I was starting to feel sexy again. I was starting to feel me. And when my hair started falling out, it's not that I haven't cut my hair really, really short before. Because I've shaved it all off. I wasn't anticipating doing that because it was like the longest my hair had ever been. And I was finally feeling like, wow, all right, I'm accepting me at 54 years old, right? So shaved all my hair off and then something started happening with my digestion and my weight. And I couldn't take the weight off. And I started feeling really embarrassed and really self-conscious about myself. And while I could hold my own on a phone conversation or a Zoom conversation, when it came to, oh my God, but to, you know, to go out in front of people right now, I feel like I look terrible and I'm embarrassed. So growing up, my younger sister um, had a head of beautiful, blonde, curly, angelic hair. And because she was so skinny and kind of like so perfect, a couple times people mistaked her for a boy. And so she felt a lot of embarrassment and shame about her body, about her hair, about her being. And I'll never forget one time when we were little, uh, an incident happened where I was across the street at my friend's. They had one of those above ground little kiddie pools and we were in it. My sister came across the street with two bathing suits, but the thing was she wasn't wearing either one of them. (laughs) She was in her cute little shoes and she was naked and she was asking us, which bathing suit should I wear? And I mean, all of us were, you know, I was two years older than her, so maybe she was five or six years old. And all of our jaws were on the floor. We were like, oh my God, does she not realize she's not wearing clothes? And when she went to go back across the street to my house to put her bathing suit on, she had tripped and fallen. And there were some cars, you know, that were coming up the roads. They had all stopped. And I'm sure I did not handle it appropriately as like a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old was laughing, making fun of her because it's... You know, it's like what the older kids were doing. So they that they just joined the crowd. But I know that that had an impact on my sister. And there was always a sense of embarrassment, you know. And the thing is, my sister's a very cool person. I mean, I love her a lot. I respect her a lot in so many ways. But that embarrassment was then kind of projected onto me during our teenage years you know like she would hear people talking about me and you know calling me a slut because I had different boyfriends I had all long-term boyfriends but apparently that's what people's perspective was so I know that there were things that she was embarrassed about about me that she was projecting you know her embarrassment but putting it on me and when I started looking at this energy of embarrassment a feeling of self-consciousness shame or awkwardness I don't really personally remember feeling embarrassed by a lot like I was pretty open I was 
kept showing up. I don't think I ever felt like enough. But I don't think that I was embarrassed about anything too much about my body or my being. I was more embarrassed like, well, we didn't have the money that my friends had. And I was embarrassed that I couldn't get the clothes that I wanted. And I was embarrassed, you know, normal teenage stuff, like if my mother said something or my father said something. But I was more embarrassed about what things looked like. My sister carried an energy that was more embarrassed of how things felt. And so when I looked at and I felt into this emotional energy dynamic of embarrassment, and I was like, hmm, well, what's the other side of that? And... That was liberation, release, freedom, uninhibited. And I thought about, wow, you know, what are the things that embarrass me in, in my life? Aside from my parents at times. And it was like, wow, I was so embarrassed that I had a boyfriend cheat on me. And everybody knew it except me. I was so embarrassed about my financial situation. Because I wanted to have the things that my friends had. I was embarrassed when I went bankrupt. You know? And so I started looking at, well, what's the opposite, as I said, of embarrassment? And that was that liberation, that freedom, that not actually giving a shit. Honestly, what anyone else thinks or says. Not needing to live my life ruled by what anyone thinks of me. Not needing their validation. Not needing their permission. Uh, Being able to feel fully okay. Being me. Celebrating me. Not because someone else was doing it. But because I could feel that sense of, of honor and respect inside myself. Because I could feel... That sense of forgiveness and, and um, you know, the, the innocence that I truly am that got taken from me. And now I could actually move into loving and celebrating myself for who I am. Not being embarrassed by what was, what had taken place or you know, how I looked or whether I fit in or not. Now I could actually just start to own who I am so much more authentically and really show up not being afraid to be seen. Even if I weighed more than I like, (laughs) not being afraid to be heard. Because I felt really aligned with the truth of what I was sharing. And I knew that it was coming from the right place. And I wasn't having to try and prove anything. And I wasn't having to try and make up for anything. I could just really be me. Own myself fully. With no embarrassment. No shame. No guilt. But there was one thing left that I had to look at in this equation that I was being shown. And that one was mine. That was an energy that I took on to basically stop myself in certain ways. And that was the energy of humiliation. So after I had given back and returned, you know, to source embarrassment... That wasn't even mine. Now I had to dive in and say, well, I did take on humiliation and it's got something to teach me. So here's what it taught me. So the experience of humiliation for me was really, really powerful. And perhaps it was a you know, the 
shorter version of humiliation and what it can teach you is humility. So I just know as a child, I mean, I came in as such a bright light and who knows, you know, maybe sometimes you have to learn the opposite to really reclaim your light. But here's the definition and it's a longer one than the other ones. Humiliation is the abasement of pride, which creates mortification or leads to a state of being humbled or reduced to lowliness or submission. It's an emotion felt by a person whose social status, either by force or willingly, has just been decreased. It can be brought about through intimidation, physical or mental mistreatment or trickery, or by embarrassment if a person is revealed to have committed a socially or legally unacceptable act. Whereas humility can be sought alone as a means to de-emphasize the ego, humiliation must involve other persons, though not necessarily directly or willingly. This is going to be a longer one uh, because I want to include for this the psychological effects of it, especially because I think I have been so, now that I'm clear on it, I have been so deeply affected by humiliation for most of my life. So it says a person who suffers from severe humiliation could experience major depressions, suicidal states, and severe anxiety states such as post-traumatic stress disorder. The loss of status, like losing a job or being labeled as a liar or discredited unfairly, could cause people inability to behave normally in their communities. Humiliated individuals could be provoked and crave for revenge. Some people could feel worthless, hopeless, and helpless, creating suicidal thoughts if justice is not met. It can also lead to new insights, activism, and a new kinship with marginalized groups. Feelings of humiliation can produce humiliated fury. I had all of the above. I had the feelings of worthlessness, helplessness, hopelessness, I had the feelings of um, being labeled a liar and always having to fight for the truth because I had to suppress the actual truth of what happened so much. So humiliated fury is when I would finally get to the point where nobody understood anything and it's like I would put my fist literally through a wall or kick through a door. Now, which when turned inward can result in apathy and depression, had both of those. When turned outward can give rise to paranoia, had that, sadistic behavior, and fantasies of revenge. When it is outwardly directed, humiliated fury unfortunately creates additional victims, often including innocent bystanders. Well, I can attest to that through a lot of my boyfriends, because not knowing that I had had that abuse and that humiliation, when someone would try to love me really deeply, the shame, the humiliation, the guilt, the embarrassment, it would all come up. And I didn't know what I was dealing with. I just became paranoid that, you know, someone was trying to hack me in a, in a certain level where, you know, they're, they're telling me they love me, but that's got to be a lie because I had all of those other walls of protection up. So I can definitely attest to that. When it is inwardly directed, the resulting self-hate renders victims incapable of meeting their own needs, let alone having energy available to love and care for others. That really hits home too. So when this awareness came of like, wow, because of the shame, because of the guilt, and because of the embarrassment, because of the experiences that I went through with not even being able to honestly talk about them and having to suppress them, and then not even remembering, you know, that they happened. When I started to realize these things, the feelings of, oh my God, how could that have happened to me? Like, my dad is supposed to love me so much. We're supposed to be such, like, you know, cool friends, all kinds of stuff. So, the betrayal was such 
it just created such a deep level of humiliation. But the thing is, literally until two days or three days ago, I don't think I could even have recognized that that's what I was actually feeling. So I was willing to do this work to just say, hey, you know, I'm just going to stay open. I'm going to listen to this challenge and whatever comes up is going to come up. And having out of nowhere, you know, when this person said certain words like shame and guilt, and then all of a sudden the embarrassment and the humiliation came up, I was like, wow, I am taking this time right now on this snowy weekend and I am going to face whatever I need to face inside of myself because I am no longer going to be held hostage by these feelings anymore, especially the ones that are not mine. I get to look at and I get to see the lessons that I was learning out of it and then for the thing that I needed to face, I felt like I was coming face to face with what my deepest lesson for myself was in this life. And so when I looked at what is the opposite of humiliation, it's honor. It's esteem. It's triumph, it's success, and it's elevation. (sighs) Right? So when I looked at humiliation, and and the, the hard part of it was, you know, feeling put down, being totally degraded, feeling zero in dignity, I mean, just, like, I meant nothing. I am nothing. I was absolutely obliterated. I was mortified that my father could do this to me. But the flip side of that was, oh my God, but look at how much. Now I'm not justifying it by any means whatsoever. It is not justifiable. But what I was looking for as I was going through this new wave course was, okay, It happened, you know, there's got to be a way that I face this. There's got to be a way that I can totally accept this and not again, not condone it, but come to some place of acceptance for me so I can move on. And then when I realized that the rebalanced energies, the, the energies that are truly in alignment is the opposites of what I experienced, because you know that this world is such a duality right? We face the light and the dark so we can come to see the totality of it all. So when I came to understand that what humiliation would teach me is to honor myself, to hold myself in high esteem, not arrogance, but truly self-love, self-respect, that I would triumph over this and that that would probably lead to some of my greatest successes and the elevation of my own spirit. Then all of a sudden, with those four things that have held me hostage for so long, energetically seen fully and clearly, and in proper, like in right relationship, you know, I could finally come to a place of a whole new inner alignment within myself, knowing that I'm here to respect myself and forgive myself and honor myself and allow myself to be fully seen for the brilliance and the magic that I am. And not that anyone else has to see my brilliance or magic, but I get to see it. I get to own it. I get to live it. That. That feeling of having worked so hard my whole life just to feel like me. 
just to feel what it feels like when I'm not in conflict, when I'm not especially in conflict of carrying someone else's stuff that I can't even argue with, but have tried to my whole life, you know, to get validated by them when I realized that wasn't the point of it. I didn't need to be validated by them. I needed to understand what happened. I chose to understand the truth of this dynamic so that I'd be able to share it with others who might be going through the same thing, who might have a weight lifted off of their shoulders just like I lifted the weight W-A-I-T and W-E-I-G-H-T that I've been carrying around for something that I didn't even do for something that wasn't even my fault yet I kept beating myself up for it my whole life trying to perfect myself so I never have to feel that again and when I was finally strong enough after being a fitness trainer and after being a qigong practitioner and after being an animal communicator and after learning the energetic dynamics of authentic female leadership from my white wolf alpha female dog ayana you know and nature and my 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 horse cisco and my dog indy and my paint you know ponies and their mama like it was like whoa I don't have to run away from this shit anymore. I do not have to distract myself anymore. I get to see now what these dynamics were. I get to see the pattern that they were creating. I get to see the behaviors they were creating. I get to see the thoughts and emotions they were creating. I get to see the carnage that that created because I was so afraid for so long to take a look at this stuff. Because I was so afraid. I just didn't want to feel those feelings anymore. So there was no way that I could actually stand in front of them and look at them and realize, wow. I I watched the movie Lucy the other night with Scarlett Johansson. And when after this substance got into her system and her brain was at such an elevated state it was so beyond her emotions it was kind of like seeing pure consciousness and be able to explain it that's really what it felt like it felt like instead of having to feel all of these horrific you know chemical interactions from these emotions inside of me I actually got to stand before them one by one and like, you know, looking at a screen that's outside of you, I, I got to actually look through what each of these are. Now, I'm sure that there are many more and who knows, this might lead me on a journey, you know, of, of creating some kind of model or way of seeing things. I just know that these were the four most prevalent ones for me. And while my brain goes, well, 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 you can't share this until you have the entire picture. Well, this is a pretty good picture for me. And I'm sure that there will probably be men and women that can relate to this. And probably, like, those are my people, you know, who I came here to share this information with. To help assist them to, help, to, to provide this as a, a way that they can start looking at things. For themselves, not because I'm I'm telling them to, but, you know, if they've looked at things, because I've looked at so many things, so many different ways that, honestly, I just don't know if it was ever working, and if it was, it felt like, you know, this little breadcrumb and that little breadcrumb, and what happened today, as a result of going through this new wave challenge has just so completely shifted my psychology. It has so completely shifted my emotional state because now I have such a clearer framework of instead of trying to fix those things or bury those things or be afraid of them or distract myself, I can look at them fucking head on right now. And each one of them, I can say, hey, now I see what you are teaching me. Now I see what was mine and what was not mine. And even what wasn't mine, what lessons did I learn from it? 
and what was mine to see and work with and alchemize for me, holy shit, (laughs) I did it. Now, does my outer life seem different? Am I living in the home of my dreams at this moment? And No, but I feel on the inside so completely different. And all of the faulty wiring and all of the old programs and all of the curses and spells and hexes and cords and whatever else was there that was trying to keep me from seeing me ever since I was a little kid, ever since I saw the darkness crawl into my father and attack me. Now I get to see exactly why they were trying to attack me and stop me. Because when you allow yourself the strength and the courage the tenacity and the grit to say like Melanie Ann Layer says no matter what no matter what I I got this no matter what I can take care of myself no matter what I have the courage the strength the fortitude I have the desire. I have the self-love, the self-respect, the honor, the esteem, the forgiveness. That no matter what, I'm going to reclaim my whole self and be all that I came here to be. That I don't have to carry that shame or that guilt or that embarrassment and that humiliation that I felt because of all of those things. Because of all, and I mean, that's a, a drop in the bucket. Like, I've been divorced, I've been bankrupt twice, I've been homeless, I've been evicted, I've lived in my car with my animals, I spent several years, not just a month or two on the road, not knowing where the fuck I was going. And yet, you know, with all of that, I graduated college with honors. I got my master's. I got my PhD. I've been doing this communication work and body work with animals. I can teach it. I'm really, really good at it for, you know, understanding animal issues and human issues because I understood myself. I know who I am in my heart and I know now with all the things that I've been through it's probably so I can share with others not necessarily avoidance but a way to look at things that may bring things into alignment for you easier for me I had to take the hard road for them I don't have to take the hard road anymore. But if there's a way to shine some awareness, you know, to express, to share who I am, what I went through, not for you to put me on a pedestal or for you to, not any of that. If that helps you in your journey for where you're at, I understand now I needed all of that pressure because I'm intense. And I needed all that pressure for the coal that I was to turn into a diamond and shine brightly. That was my path. I don't know what your path is. But I do know that I feel that it's in right relationship to share this information for however it lands for you. And like me, having that moment with Melanie... To go, holy shit, it's all coming together. I don't know. Maybe this will help you if you're in that moment. Or this will help you along your path. Sending you so much love, joy, and gratitude.